Welcome to the Eczema Warrior Podcast. I'm your host, Julia Chen. I'm here to help you heal your eczema naturally so you can finally live your best damn life. Many years ago in my own eczema healing journey, I was stuck and confused on how to heal my skin. Fast forward to today, after many lessons learned and lots of trial and error, I'm now living my best life and traveling the world with clearer skin. If you're an eczema or TSW warrior who desires a life of food freedom and is wanting to heal your skin without steroids while using mindset and manifestation as a tool, you're in the right place. Now let's get into it. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of the Eczema Warrior Podcast. Today, I want to talk all about protein. Protein is something that is so important when it comes to your healing. It's important for all kinds of reasons when it comes to your health. And so today's episode, I want to talk about why it's important for healing, how to actually calculate your protein needs, and exactly how to add in protein into your diet. Now, before we get into it, um, I'm just going to share a quick little life update. So as you guys know, right now I'm living in Thailand actually just arrived to Chiang Mai, which is this cute little city here in northern Thailand a week ago. And over the past week, it's been pretty busy just because Black Friday is coming up in the next few days, you guys. And I have so many exciting things coming for you. We're doing a big sale. It's a sale that I haven't done in the past before. So if you are wanting or been wanting to work with me and you're have been looking at my different offers, definitely keep your eyes peeled because in just a couple days, we're going to be launching the Black Friday sale. So anyways, over the past week, I've been working hard behind the scenes for Black Friday. So I actually haven't done very much here in Chiang Mai. Everyone's like, how's Chiang Mai? Like, what are you doing there? Have you explored the temples? Have you done anything cool? And I'm literally just like, I've just been sitting in cafes working, (laughs) which is fine because the cafes here are so cute. There's so many nice coffee shops with really good coffee, really good pastries. The vibe is amazing. It's like jungle vibes in some of these cafes, and I just love it so much. And yesterday night, I actually went out with a mutual friend that uh, one of my other friends I met in Colombia had introduced me to, and she... Her and I went out for drinks and met some other nomads here who are working and living in Chiang Mai. So that was really cool. Made some new friends. And then, yeah, I think I've decided that I'm going to extend my stay here in Thailand. Usually when I arrive in a new place, I give myself a month to feel the vibe out and see how it goes. But as you guys have heard in my previous episodes, I'm so tired of moving around. A lot of things happened in the past few months. And so I want to be staying in one place for at least a couple months just so I can be more grounded and have a good routine. So I will likely be here until January. And if I really like it, I will stay a little bit longer. So that's a little bit of a life update. Um, Exciting, but also just a time for me to relax and focus more on work, which is important, (laughs) obviously. Okay, so today's episode, how to boost protein intake. So first of all, why is protein so important? Protein is literally the building blocks when it comes to every cell in your body. It plays a critical role in giving your body energy. It actually helps to carry oxygen in your body. And it also makes up antibodies. So antibodies are what fights off infections, what helps with your immune system and to battle illnesses. And so if you are not getting enough protein in your diet or in general, then there's a likely chance that your immune system might be a little bit weaker just because protein is what makes up the antibodies. Now, protein is also really important because it plays a huge, huge role in wound healing. So when I used to work in the hospital, I used to work with patients with burns, with big wounds, and us as dietitians in the hospital, we had to provide enough protein in our patient's diet through supplementation and through their meals at the hospital in order to help with wound healing. So that's really important as well. And when you are dealing with eczema, oftentimes you have wounds from scratching or just your skin breaking apart. If you have TSW, it's even worse because usually the wounds are quite big and you might experience oozing as well. 
And when you're oozing, you're also losing protein in the ooze as well. So all of that being said, getting enough protein is super, super important so that you can start healing those wounds and providing your body the nutrition that it needs for healing. So those are the main benefits when it comes to protein and why it's so important for the body. Also, one last thing as well, protein is really important for keeping you full. So oftentimes when I see clients, they're always telling me, I'm so hungry after my meals, like even though I feel like I'm eating enough. And then I look into their meal and I see that their protein requirements are not being met. And if your protein requirements aren't being met at every meal, then you're going to get hungry very easily. And if you're going to get hungry easily, you're going to be snacking a lot. You might be binging on things that you normally wouldn't binge on. So making sure you have adequate protein at every meal is also crucial. So when it comes to calculating your protein needs, everyone has their own individual protein requirements. Depending on the level of severity of your eczema or TSW, as well as your activity level, such as exercise. And so, usually, the general rule of thumb, and again, this number is going to be dependent on your activity levels, but for my clients who have moderate to severe eczema flares and there are wounds going on, maybe like minor wounds, then I would give the number 1.3 grams per kilo of your body weight as your protein requirement. So for example, let's say you weigh 60 kilos and I'm using kilos just because when we're calculating protein needs, this is how we usually do it. (laughs) So if you want to figure out your kilos from pounds, just divide your weight in pounds by 2.2 and you'll get your weight in kilos. So 60 kilos, we'll use that as an example of your weight. And if we multiply that by 1.3, because you have moderate to severe eczema and you have a bit of wounds, then your daily protein intake should be around 78 grams of protein. So if you divide that number by three, 78 grams divided by three, that's about 26 grams of protein per meal. So what does 26 grams of protein per meal look like? So right now I want you to open up your hand and look at your the size of your hand. The size of your hand is about 25 grams of protein when it comes to meat. So chicken, fish, pork is about 25 grams of protein. Fish has a little bit less protein than chicken. So let's just say 20 to 25 grams. So if you can eat the size of your hand of protein at lunch and dinner, then you'll automatically achieve 25 grams of protein at that meal. Now, The thing is, is that breakfast is the most challenging meal where most people don't get enough protein. Most people don't eat meat in the morning, right? So getting protein outside of meat can be challenging, but there are different ways. But first, I just want to say, you know, when you're calculating your needs around 1.2 to 1.3, also, if you have like a lot of oozing and you're going through TSW, I would even aim even higher, maybe 1.4, maybe 1.5. But please work with a dietitian or a licensed practitioner who knows how to calculate your protein needs because too much protein can also be harmful, especially if you have kidney issues. So just make sure that you work with somebody if you don't exactly know what your protein needs are and if you have other health issues that may require you to be more careful with your protein intake. Okay, so how do you add protein into your diet? So like I said, if you eat meat for lunch and dinner, you can easily achieve 25 grams of protein. Now, if you want to boost protein intake, which is what this episode is about, there are other ways, not through meat or you know animal products, let's say you're vegetarian. And so good sources of plant-based proteins include nuts and seeds, as well as foods like tofu and tempeh beans and legumes. They're also high in protein as well. So when you're preparing your meals, you can start boosting your protein amount from adding tofu, adding tempeh, adding beans like chickpeas, lentils, black beans, kidney beans into your meals, having nuts and seeds as a snack. Uh, For example, you can make a chia pudding or a chia dessert, overnight oats using chia. Chia seeds have a little bit of protein in there, so that could be a good way to boost your protein for breakfast. Another way you can boost protein is to eat eggs. 
And I know in the community, a lot of people are just like, don't eat eggs. Like eggs are bad for you, but it's not. Okay. Like I always say, when it comes to diet, if you don't have a reaction from eating certain foods after testing them out, then you don't have to worry about avoiding them. Not everyone has a sensitivity to eggs, although some people with eczema might. But if you figure it out that you don't have a problem with eggs, then eggs are actually a great source of protein that you can add into your breakfast. You can add into any meal, really. One egg gives you about six grams of protein. So personally, if you're just eating eggs in the morning, it probably wouldn't be enough to boost the protein intake for breakfast, especially if you need 26 grams. So you want to kind of figure out what else you can do, whether adding in more hemp seeds into your meals somewhere, into your oatmeal. If you want to make a protein shake, that can be very helpful as well. I often recommend my clients to consider adding a protein shake or a protein smoothie into their breakfast because when you are using protein powder, most protein powder brands, one scoop will already give you 20 grams. So right then and there, it's super easy to achieve that 25 grams of protein at your breakfast. And then you can boost it up with hemp seeds, chia seeds, for example. You can even add in silken tofu. That's something that's a, it's a hack, by the way, you guys, where I learned or I've tried actually too, is if you don't want to use protein powder in your smoothie, you can actually go to the store and get yourself a pack of silken tofu, which is that very soft tofu and blend it into your smoothie. It doesn't taste like anything. And it's a great way to boost protein intake for your meal and for the day as well. So those are some examples when it comes to adding protein into your diet. Fairly easy. And again, just being more intentional with what foods you're choosing and choosing ones that are high protein. Another example is to add yogurt into your diet. Greek yogurt is higher in protein than other forms of yogurt. So that's another way to boost protein intake as well. So yeah, that's what I have for today's episode. We're going to keep it short and sweet. Um, Some quick tips over here. If you have any questions about protein and diet, feel free to reach out to me at juliachin.rd. And of course, if you need support when it comes to healing your skin through diet, through supplements, mindset, manifestation, this is what I do inside my group coaching program, Clear Your Eczema. We're doing a huge Black Friday sale coming up in the next few days. So Right now, if you want to apply and book a call, you'll already be able to get the sale. So make sure you check out the show notes where you can learn about clear eczema and see if it's a good fit for you by booking a free call with me. And we can discuss about the program and how I can support you in your healing. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and rest of your night and hope you're excited for the Black Friday sale coming up soon. All right, guys, have a good one. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode. Now, before I let you go, I want to let you know I have this amazing eczema visualization. This visualization has helped me so much when it comes to manifesting eczema healing, healing flares faster than I can ever imagine, reducing the itch, and just feeling great in my body. This is the exact same visualization I use for my own healing as well as my client's healing as well. And if you want to receive this visualization, then all you have to do is leave us a review and Tell us what you think about the podcast, screenshot it, send it to your email at hello at juliachin.ca and you will receive the visualization to your inbox. I look forward to seeing your review and we'll see you in the next episode. 